primarily targeted groups. These programs include community works program, expanded public works program, national rural youth service corps, national youth service program, skills training, including CETA funded learnerships, jobs fund, employment tax incentive, and the youth employment service. As of December 2018, of the 4.3 million EPWP work opportunities created, 2 million targeted the youth. Government identified business process outsourcing and offshoring as a priority sector that for, for the attraction of investment and creation of jobs. It was determined that business and government should work cooperatively to develop and execute a strategy that would make South Africa a preferred location for offshore business processes. The Business Trust responded positively to this initiative and allocated funding of 100, mil 100 million grants to facilitate the process of interaction between the public and private sectors. Today, we can report that jobs created have increased exponentially from just 9,000 jobs in 2009 to over 71,000 jobs in 2020. On 21 April 2020, April, uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa committed that 100 billion would be invested in job creation as part of the stimulus package for the country. In the special adjustment budget announced in June 2020, an amount of 19.6 billion was allocated for 2020 2021. The Presidential Youth Employment Intervention Project is another one of government's mechanisms to tackle and set out priority actions to address youth unemployment. Another great initiative to note is the Youth Employment Service, which is a pioneering initiative where government collaborated with business and labor to tackle South Africa's youth unemployment to co-create a future that works. The YES initiative has already provided itself, proved itself to be one of the true innovations in South Africa, generating more than 50,000 quality work experiences with more than 312 corporates already signed up for the next year's program. He has injected 2.8 billion rand into the economy through youth salaries with 58% being women and 85% coming from grant recipient households. The Industrial Development Corporation and the Small Enterprise Finance Agency have committed a combined 2.7 billion rand to finance youth-owned enterprises. Over 1.1 billion dispersed for CIFA youth-owned enterprises since the signing of the youth accord, creating 63,222 jobs for the period 2014-2018. Government is in the process of introducing digital hubs located in state-owned industrial parks, special economic zones, and other areas as determined by the DCIC. The hubs are, are introduced to capacitate the youth and emerging businesses with digital knowledge, empower entrepreneurs with market insights and provide linkages for small business opportunities. The economic reconstruction and, the, and recovery plan driven by the reimagined industrial strategy places emphasis on master plans as key drivers to attract investment, build capable local industries and create jobs. To date, Four master plans have been completed and signed, which signals the collective commitment of all social partners in ensuring success in their respective industries. The process to finalize two more master plans is currently underway. The poultry master plan has attracted 800 million worth of investment, which will ensure that young people are not just em employed in the sector, but are employers themselves. During lockdown, we managed to sign the sugar master plan, which has since contributed in decline of imports and an increase in local production from our growers. The industry currently employs an estimated 65,000 people directly and through upstream and downstream multipliers supports a further 270,000 indirect jobs. The sugar industry sustains an estimated 1 million livelihoods, mostly in deep rural areas. Like in the poultry industry, support for black farmers has been scaled up to ensure access and competitive farming. The signing of the clothing, textile, footwear, and leather master plan in 2019 provides a blueprint for investment and job creation through localization in the industry. 
The RCTSL value chain sustains approximately 212,000 formal jobs with some 92,000 jobs estimated in the manufacturing sector and 120 in the retail portion of the value chain. Majority of the jobs in the value chain in this industry are mainly young people from design to retail employees. The automotive master plan commits to double production from 600,000 cars to 1.2 million cars and double employment in the automotive value chain from 112,000 in 2015 to 224,000. The Ford Motor Company in February this year announced a 16 billion investment to expand the manufacturing facility in Tuani. The investment from Ford will increase production to 200 vehicles from 168. The expanded production will help create 1,200 incremental Ford jobs in South Africa, increasing the local workforce to 5,500 employees and adding an estimated 10,000 new jobs across Ford's local supplier network. In addition, the investment has created an opportunity for the development of the Gauteng Eastern Cape freight rail corridor estimated at 10 billion and is expected to be fully functional by 2025. This corridor development will lead to job creation and stimulate more business opportunities in the two provinces. Once again, I wish to, to reiterate Honorable House Chair, the worth of Isitualandosa Parak Inque, Oliver Regional Chambo, that a country, a movement, a person that does not value its youth and children does not deserve its future. I thank you. Thank you, Honorable Deputy Minister. The next speaker is the Honorable Mpiti. Thank you, Honorable House Chair. I would like to take this moment to send my deepest condolences on behalf of the Democratic Alliance to the family of Mtogo Zizi Mtuba, who was brutally killed on the streets of Bramfontein yesterday. No one deserves to die the way that he did. We plead with all those involved to remain calm and non-violent, including the police. Honorable House Chair Mark Twain said that the two most important days in your life are the day that you are born and the day you find out why. Unfortunately, under the ANC, the youth may never find out why. Young people continue to bear the brunt of unemployment, poverty, and inequality. They remain the hardest hit by violent crime, drug abuse, and underdevelopment. All these things we know, so I'm going to skip past them and ask an important question to say, why is it that the ANC does not want young people to succeed in this country? Why are young people on street corners without anything to do? Why are young people who have received tertiary education sitting at home as we speak while their qualifications collect dust? Where are all the plans that the ANC talks about? Where are all the opportunities we hear about every year? Why are young people not receiving them on the ground? So I want us to work through the plans that the ANC has told us about. In 2018, there was a job summit in Santon. You may remember that where 77 commitments were made to help fight unemployment in this country. What is the status of those 77 commitments? What has happened to them? Many of us continue to wonder whether what happened in Santon in 2018 was just a publicity stunt where they did not, in fact, try to deal with youth unemployment in this country. What happened to the plan to support young entrepreneurs? Where is the support for work seekers and training for work readiness to better match young people to economic opportunities? What happened to lowering data costs? Young people spend on average 380 Rand on data looking for work. And with 8.2 million young South Africans not in employment, education or training, data remains a luxury. What happened to these commitments? In 2018, already the president had stated that Youth Unemployment Service Initiative, which would create a million paid internships over three years, we have still as young people not seen what has happened to those million internships. In fact, since that statement, young people are more unemployed now than they were then. As if youth unemployment is not bad enough, we now have to deal with the frustration and the anxiety of having to inherit an incapable state at the brink of economic collapse. The truth is under the ANC government, young people continue to remain unemployed. And the fact of the matter is as young people, we will go and grow up to be middle-aged, still trying to repay and rebuild this economy. 
So today we will listen to every ANC speaker tell us what they tell us every year. The fact remains, no matter how beautiful and well-crafted a coffin may look like, it won't make anyone wish for death. The truth is young people are in the most dangerous economic and political periods of our lives. Young people my age, between the age of 16 to 35 years old, are at risk of never working a day in their entire lives. Or if they do work, they're basically working to be poorer than their parents and having a lower standard of living. So I asked the ANC to balance us. What is the plan this time around? Do you need some time to think about it? While you think about it, let me tell you what the DA wants to do. The DA has proven where we govern that we actually put young people at the center of our agenda. And we actually have a track record of actually delivering. We would, in, we would initiate a voluntary national service, a one-year program of income and skills development for school leavers, something where we'd already, we've already piloted in the Western Cape through the Premier's Advancement of Youth Program. We would create jobs throughout South Africa that provide advice and free internet for job seekers. We would grow small business opportunities through increased funding assistance and removing blockages and red tape. We would put an end to the practice of sex for jobs, cash for jobs, and cater deployment across government. We would ensure bursaries to learners from low-income families to ensure that they cover comprehensive cost of study, so to ensure that learners have the necessary tools on time to pass. We would develop a work-study entrepreneurship program, substantially increasing the involvement of companies to provide opportunities in new and existing fields. In other words, the re-stimulation of the employment tax incentive. This through giving firms a tax credit for hiring individuals between the ages of 18 to 29 years of age. One of the imperfections of the South African labor market is the effect of collective bargaining or negotiated union wages on wages for both union and non-union workers, which in result creates wages that are too high to clear the market. The wage subsidy implicit in the ETI lowers the cost of young inexperienced workers to employers without lowering the wages of workers themselves. The only thing I know with absolute certainty is that the ANC has failed to break the stranglehold of extreme inequality, unemployment, economic inclusion. Each and every day they fail young men and women who carry their dreams in suitcases to a South Africa that was promised. They fail the men and women who still have hope that one day this will turn around. They fail our children. They fail the youth who went to school to have a different life. It is the youth of South Africa that I do believe will unshackle our country from the ANC. It is the youth of South Africa who, when confronted with various challenges, are not afraid to seek out different opinions for the sake of solutions and progress. It is young people such like Michelle Kamikeng, the youngest Hello, author. Remember, your time is, is now expired. Thank you very much. Jim. Thank you. The next speaker is the Honorable Yako. Thank you, Speaker. May I continue? Please proceed. Thank you. Speaker, um, Chaperson, sorry. The growing crisis of unemployment that started in the late 1970s and continues to this day is closely linked with South Africa's adoption of neoliberal policies and the deindustrialization that, that has collapsed the little manufacturing that was there in the economy. The growing crisis of unemployment, in particular the failure to give young people a skill as part of preparation for them to join and participate productively in the economy is linked with defunding of education, research and development. You'd rather see bodies of lifeless young people in the streets covered with blood, innocent men such as Mtogosi Sintumba, than graduate and employed as participants in the economy. South Africa has a total labor force of just over 22 million people. More than 11.2 million people. These are people who are already and willing to work, fit and capable to work, but cannot find work anyway. More than 3 million people between the ages of 15 and 24 years old are not in employment, not in education, and not in training. Meaning that these are people who are just languishing in the streets every day without contributing in any form or shape to South Africa's economy in any productive way. This is the true state of joblessness and of the joblessness pandemic facing young people in South Africa today. We need to rethink the whole industrialization approach of South Africa in a more realistic and practical manner. At the center of South Africa's industrial policy should be the expansion 
of a, of a manufacturing capacity to produce industrial and household goods. Many of the industrial goods that are consumed by the state to kickstart the process of industrialization, we should use the state to we should use the state as the, uh, the state's procurement budget. In any case, there is evidence from other parts of the world to show that industrial factories that produce industrial and household goods do not depend on high sophisticated skills, but can accommodate labor force with low skills. Government through, through departments of health, police, agriculture, and all others spend hundreds of billions on motor cars every single year. South Africa should reorientate Denel's capacity to manufacture these motor cars with upfront orders. Hospitals, clinics, and correctional facilities spend billion each year on linen, yet South Africa does not have a textile industry. We must rebuild factories that were closed in places such as Atlantis, Shayandima, and Sheikh to localize production of linen and other textile material in this country. There are many goods that government and households use on a daily basis that as a country, we should produce these locally. However, any industrial strategy that is not planned and guided by the state cannot happen without creation of jobs. This is why it is important for the state to be at the center of a strategic strategy and industrial strategy to ensure that there is jobs. We know that white owned manufacturing companies are rushing to replace people with machines to maximize profit at all costs, even though there's no sufficient evidence to show that when you replace people with machines, whatever you produce will have no buyers. Without jobs, there is no income. Without income, there are no buyers. And no industrial strategy not led by the state will lead to industrialization without jobs. But we know that the current government does not have the willingness and capacity to build a sustainable industrial capacity. South Africa will continue to depend largely in the economy that exports raw material only to import finished goods produced by other people who created jobs for their people, while young people in South Africa languish in unemployment. The austerity budget driven by a capitalist agenda is undisputable and clear evidence that there is no intention to revive the economy or even the industrialization to create jobs for young people. The Department of Trade and Industry budget was cut by 1.3 billion. This is the consequence of austerities. You cannot say you will prioritize jobs for young people and implement policies that cut funding for their education and cut a budget of a, of a department that is meant to lead the country towards industrialization. I thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Member. The next speaker is the Honorable Schlengwa. Um, House Chairperson, good afternoon. At the outset, let me convey condolences on behalf of the Nkata Freedom Party to the family of Ntozi Sindumba, to his wife and his three children, who died at the hands of a brutal police force which is unable to even meet the most basics of riot control. His death arises out of a collapse of funding for students in our institutions of higher learning. The ripple effect of that collapse is that if these students are not able to enter university, they become another statistic of people who are unskilled, unqualified, and therefore inching closer and closer to unemployment. You've got a shrinking tax base, all because of a collapsing economy. The truth is, Honorable House Chairperson, our problems did not begin with COVID-19 nor the lockdown. Those things simply compounded a problem that we had had for the longest of time. Since 1994, all sorts of plans have been mooted. Kia, Askisa, the RTP, the NDP, all of them have fallen by the wayside. What South Africa is good at is planning. What it's bad at is implementation. And the worst outcome of that is that the victims become the young people of this country who continue to languish in poverty and unemployment. Government seems to be failing to understand the most basic of these tenets. And the result of that is that year in and year out, we will come to this house, debate this issue, and government simply does not have a plan. So it's quite clear now that the problem is not South Africa, but the problem is the government. It's time the government was removed. 
We cannot year in and year out be saying the same thing over and over again to the same party over and over again without results, without movement, and without any care or concern. When the IFP was in government, where we governed, we developed special economic zones or the locally for the initiatives of local economic development. Here, we're speaking of areas such as Guastebe and Emadade. When the ANC took over, they decided to shut those things down because they saw them as the legacy of the IFP. What happened? People lost jobs. And now you've recognized that we were right and you are correcting that. We have said for the longest of time, develop jobs where people are, develop the economy where people are. What have we seen? Further and further reductions in the fundings to the municipalities where, are, where they are able, should be able to be creating the spaces for people to actually get jobs. This too is an indictment on this government. And so we are proposing as the IFP that the low skilled jobs which the country has must be reserved for South Africans. This is not xenophobic, this is not nationalistic, it's a patriotic duty for the millions of young South Africans who are in desperate need for jobs, desperate needs for dignity. And as the Honorable Mumalo said, the bill that we will be tabling in Parliament seeks to do exactly that. When will this government put South Africans first? When will this government acknowledge its failures? When will this government walk its talk? We are dealing today with the challenges of free education, which were promised as far back as 1994. Nothing has happened. In 2009, you promised 10 million jobs. In that year, the economy lost 500,000 jobs. Every promise that this ANC government has made successfully, they have walked in the opposite direction of the implementation of that promise. Shape up or shape out. Young people in this country want jobs. It's incumbent on the government to create a conducive and enabling environment for that to happen. And so far, you have failed to do so. Look no further than the statistics. Well, they well, tell you the challenge. Now we can the picture, and the inequality we see is an indictment on you. I thank you, Chair. The next speaker is Honorable Briet. Thank you, Achbare Voorzitter. Voorzitter, Zuid-Afrika is in a crisis. Zuid-Afrika staan op die rand van een afgrond en werkloosheid is dit wat Zuid-Afrika oor die afgrond gaan drijf. As ons van werkloosheid praat en ons kyk specifiek na jeugwerkloosheid, dan staan ons nie meer op die rand van een afgrond nie. Ons is oor die afgrond en daar is nie meer tak op die pad onder toe om die val te breek nie. Voorzitter, hierdie is dalk baie metafories gestel, maar een feit bly een feit. Die enigste manier waarop ons gaan verseker dat Zuid-Afrika nie oor die afgrond tuimel nie, is om seker te maak dat daar takkies op pad onder toe is waaraan daar vastgeklauw kan word. Maar hier die takkies waaraan jeugwerkloosheid gaan moet vastklauw so dat hy nie die boring van die afgrond tref nie, of selfs meer kan probeer uitklim, is nie wat die ANC regering dink dit is nie. Youth unemployment will not be addressed by summits and workshops and government agencies. Jobs do not fall from the sky or grow on trees for that matter and can also not be created by any government. Let me repeat, job opportunities do not fall from the sky and no government can sustainably create jobs. Job opportunities are dependent on economic growth and circumstances, which allow and are conducive for businesses to invest and grow and flourish. Yes, it is important to ensure that our education system functions so that people get opportunities to acquire skills and qualifications. But currently, skilled South Africans are leaving the country annually because of a lack of opportunities and the dire circumstances, including violent crime and a lack of service delivery. Around 23,000 skilled South Africans leave the country annually. We are losing skills, Chairperson. And the fact of the matter is, we need skilled South Africans to stay in the country to ensure that more jobs can be created and that low or no skilled South Africans can be employed. Skills be transferred to them and South Africa as a whole can prosper. Businesses can't grow and invest where there is no basic services, where sewage is running in the streets, there is no stable electricity provision and infrastructure is deteriorating. Job creation will not take place if there are not the required structural reforms, such as addressing our energy crisis, and we've seen many load shedding issues today. 
making it easier to do business and trade, and lowering corporate taxes. Government needs to stimulate a conducive environment for the private sector. But Chairperson, the answer is quite simple. Less restrict restrictive legislation. It should be made attractive and safe to invest in South Africa. It currently is not. There's policy uncertainty, threats of expropriation without compensation, unaffordable minimum wages, and no value for money in terms of tax paid. The youth need equal opportunities. Stop discrimination on the basis of race. Stop legislation which only benefits a selected politically connected and is taking away from the masses of unemployed and poor youth. South Africans have enormous potential and South Africa alike. This can be a prosperous country if an environment is created where they can flourish, if there is a responsible government which acts against corruption, where policies and legislation provides equal opportunities for all, and where tax money is earned, not collected. Voorzitter, hierdie is die takkies wat ma gaan maak, dat jeug werkloosheid omself uit die dieptes van die afgrond terugkrou, wat in realiteit Suid-Afrika gaan red van die afgrond, en nie dit wat die aansie regering dink werkloosheid gaan aanspreek en oplos, en Suid-Afrika in sy geheel red nie. Voorzitter, ek dankie. Hostje. Okay. Thank you, honorable member. The next speaker is the honorable Soukas. Honorable Chair, our biggest challenge in this House is talking past each other, serving narrow sectional interest while pretending to benefit the country as a whole, or agitating for utopias but never offering a practical roadmap. And this prevents us from taking hands to find new solutions that actually address this problem. For over the last 20, 20 years, we started numerous agencies lavishly funded the government, but sit with an ever-widening skills and employment gap. Agriculture is a vital sector which has a significant capacity to absorb low skills and unskilled workers. Landbouw is a belangrike sector om individuele en gemeenskapsontwikkeling te bevorder tot die voordeel van die land en voedselsekerheid. Die COVID-19 pandemie het globale voorzieningskettings ontbrug en dit is een geleentheid om ons eie selfstandige landbouwsektor te bevoordeel. Ons grootste uitdaging in hierdie land is dat die verlede ons toekomst kniehalter en dit verhoed ons om krisis en geleentheid te verander. Landbouw en vaardigheid ontwikkeling moet synoniem word. Anders sal ons mense altyd waterdraars en houtkappers bly, selfs in mentaliteit. We urgently need a national debate that includes all our people and addresses the issues of developing rural communities and empowering rural workers through effective skills development programs. We must not close rural schools as it is a key driver of the rural economy and an important means of transferring resources from the urban to the rural environment. Ons sal moet een kopskuif maak en bereid wees om opofferings te maak om herontwikkeling van landelijke gemeenskappe te bevorder. Dit is die grootste sleetel tot stabiliteit en werkskepping met vaardigheidsontwikkeling. Wat het verhoed is die politiek. The ICDP wants to emphasize the need for us to rediscover the dignity and importance of working the land. A dignity that comes from the value of hard work and the contribution it makes to building our country. To unlock the potential of agriculture in creating joyful employment will require courage and boldness to, remo to remove the obstacles that makes this sector a curse word to the majority of people, especially young people. We must develop sustainable models in farming. And these must lay the foundation for pathways to productive land ownership. Ons moet erkenning gee dat landbouw die meest arbeidsintensieve sector is en die grootste bijdrage kan lever tot opheffing. In Uganda in 2019 was dit een emotionele en een persoonlijke ontwaking om die trots van landbouwstudenten en academici te zien. Die focus daar was op landbouw voor die behoud van mensen en land. En hier in Zuid-Afrika moet ons diezelfde voorbeeld Time is now oh. expired. Dank Thank you. The next speaker is the Honorable Zungula. The Honorable Zungula. 
Thank you, Chair. On behalf of the ATM, we'd like to extend our deepest condolences to the family of Mtoko Zisintumba. The growing crisis of unemployment, especially amongst the youth, must not be ignored any longer, especially given the fact that we have more than 63% youth unemployment rate. Out of the 11 million South African citizens who are unemployed, more than 55% do not have metric. About 30% only have metric. So realistically speaking, we have more than 6 million South African citizens who are dependent on low skills jobs in order to make a living. The government has failed South Africa by allowing non-South African citizens to dominate the low skills jobs at the expense of citizens. Across the country, these low skills jobs are dominated by non-South Africans from hospitality, truck driving, hairdressing, security, meter, taxes, domestic work, and others. South Africa can't afford to play Father Christmas to the entire world at the expense of its own citizens. South African youth can't be beggars in their own country. The Department of Employment and Labor must do inspections in all companies to check if those companies are operating within the law when it comes to employing of non-South African citizens. All companies who are breaking the law must be heavily fined and the management responsible for hiring non-South African citizens must be charged and arrested in accordance to the law. Linya Allah to find a company operating in our country, yet not even one South African citizen is working there. The Minister of Finance did allude to this problem in April 2020, saying in the new economy post lockdown, majority of the workers must be South African. We know many companies prefer to employ non-South Africans in order to exploit and pay them slave wages. This reverses the gains made in achieving equality in the workplace, especially because it is the black South Africans who are laid off in order to create- The person on a point of order. Honorable member, what is the point of order? Chair, uh, while I recognize this is a debate and the points of debate, I however believe that as members of parliament, we have a duty to uphold a constitution uh, which has its uh, values. I do not believe uh, uh, sentiments mm -hmm. that seek to express xenophobic sentiments are ones that us as parliament should be uh, allowing. I will therefore require your ruling in this instance. We are Mr. Zungula's, uh, Honorable Zungula's sentiments expressed throughout his speech can only be identified as xenophobic and particularly xenophobic you, towards African nationals. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Member. I will look into the matter. However, it is a political discussion and debate that is taking place. I see the DA do have a member later in the debate that will also be able to respond to what the Honorable Member is saying. In the meantime, I will allow the member to exercise his freedom of speech, but I will, I will look into the answer, Honorable Member, and if necessary, make an appropriate ruling. Please continue, Honorable Member. Thank you, Chair. This reverses the gains made in achieving equality in the workplace, especially because Black South Africans are laid off in order to create space for non-South Africans. No company operating in South Africa must be allowed to break the law. No company, to, no company must operate in our country without having a majority of the workforce being citizens. As the ATM was saying, special attention must be paid to these China malls where almost all stores do not even have a single South African working there. We can't allow that nonsense to continue any further. This is South Africa. The expectation and the reality must be majority of the employees in any business must be black South Africans as we are the majority. There is no new law that is needed here. There are no new ratios that are needed here. Rather, we just need the department to enforce the existing laws. And lastly, just like the Home Affairs is reviewing permits issued since the year 2004, employment mm -hmm. and labor mm -hmm. must review. Thank you. The next speaker is the Honorable Dunjua. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members. Good afternoon. Indeed, as the inclusive government whose purpose is to unite our people, the ANC Manifesto of 2019 speaks 
to an inclusive approach when it says let's grow South Africa together. Growing South Africa together, growing South Africa together is a clarion call to all South Africans, both black and white, rich and poor, urban and rural, young and old, to make this vision a living reality. The NC Manifesto has seven focus areas of which the first two speaks to creation of new jobs and decent jobs, transforming the economy to, to serve all people. Before my Honorable Dunjwa, I think you've muted yourself. Will you just unmute and continue? Said here. Honorable Romano did say that we must speak the truth. And yes, we must speak truth to power. It is not true that there's nothing that this government has done. Isebenzile, Lohulumende, Ubanam Sanje, Sinabanduana, Abafumana Imali Escaso, for Rimfundo, in the Mazangayens, a Londo. Uba Yingagi in Dogoba, I mean Sabanduana Bapega as University, Unabanduana Abaya Guizgolo, a city passi visa, Zitivet, for Goba Bakwas, Ufumana. His skills, Zobaba was Uzimela, Anna Comigate, Mabutet Lord, whom I told a whole meta for Diane's lay. As soon as the West Bessis Parliament in Amtage, Sibes to take his lungu, what of a sister and this lungu, Ubangaba, Lohulumendo Cockerai, African National Congress, Akazange Archi, Umdana, Umzali, Magasundana Wake, who is called a stand on me. Ukuba in Magi, Michalina Pambi, Yeoko Gogba, a weapon in Sabanduan, Abalapa Abanga, Abanga of Manim Sebens. What we must ask ourselves, Okogba, if we say there are many graduates that are unemployed, who are those that are unemployed and who are those that are unemployable because of uh, the, 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 the degrees that they inquire? I'll make an example. We've got a number of young people who have done public administration, where are they going to be employed? Instead of us talking about how then do we ensure that in terms of the young people, a program of basic ed education and that of, of, of higher education and training. Yes, people who have benefited in the system of education of this country, who have acquired skills because they were privileged. Today, they are saying this government has done nothing. We, we are in a crisis. Yes, I agree. But we're in a crisis that, we, that we, we, we inherited. We must not run away from that. I'm worried, Comrade Chair, my Honorable Chair, person, is that there is no time. There are issues here that have been raised that and which I think that they need to be challenged. The president said, for young people, to, we must remove work experience for employment so that young people at an entry level are able to, especially in the public service. If I can make, make a, a, an example now of what a Department of Employment and Labor, through its branch, which is called Public Employment Service, I will just name three, because I don't have time, three provinces in the Eastern Cape between the years of 15 and 35, we have about 12,000 young people that are seeking jobs in the Western Cape. And of those 12,000 plus are females and 11,000 plus are males. In the Western Cape, we have got between 15 and 35, 9,400 of which 8,000 8, plus of those are females 9,000 plus of those are males. The unfortunate part, when we want the stats and the truth, we must also reflect on race because they are doing better. We in our constituencies, we have got young people who are coming to, to other provinces because they are alleging that in the Western Cape, a particular race will, will be preferred among others. And therefore, Chair, I want to, I really want to, 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 to say, if we talk about dignity, 
Yes, we are to talk about dignity. Together we must be here. Together in the, in, as public representatives, we must then begin to say, what is it that we think that is not being implemented in a manner that is going to change the young people? As a result, as employment and labor, we want to make some amendments in some of the laws that are a, that are a stumbling block for young people to get work. And an example of that is Criminal Amendment Act. I'm not referring to people that have raped or murdered people. I'm talking about young people that have committed petty crimes, steal a loaf of bread or a, a makeup at the time that a person was a student, but that criminal record takes 10 years to be expunged. And therefore, as employment and labor, we are going to look into that so that we, we create a conducive environment and a enabling environment for young people to work skills. It's going to be important, Honorable Chair, that we take out the mindset of young people and parents in particular, who think that a child, for a child to be educated, he must only go to a university. That's why we've got an overflow. And our condolences as the ANC to the to the to the to the, to the unfortunate situation of Mr. Mtogosi Simtambo, uh, who died yesterday. We think that the small business working together with employment and labor, there can be any there can be an inspection each and every workplace. It can be. We are inspectors or public representatives. It is in that in, in that in that in that context, Honorable Chair, that as employment and labor, we want that the, we, we want to propose and we want government to look into this that there must be regulations. Low skilled, there must be we must regulate. If, for an example, we are saying. In the, in the hospitality, I'm just making an example, it must be 60, 40. We must agree on that. We can then say we don't want African uh, people, but what we need to do, we must regulate because other countries, they do regulate. And, 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 and Honorable Chair, I do think that as, as Honorable Members, in particular, I'm worried about those members that they are saying skills have migrated in South Africa. Yes, they have migrated, but who has left South Africa? It's people that were privileged. Honorable it's member, people. your time is I'm now I thank you, Chair. Thank you. Malbongwe. Honorable Madisha. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, Honorable and, uh, Chair, I think you forgot NFP. Honorable yes, I think in future we must encourage parties who wish to participate in the debates or they want to indicate that they want to participate in the debate. Otherwise, your name doesn't appear here. But Honorable Madisha, let us allow the NFP to make a contribution and then they okay. are... No problem. My apologies okay. for that, Honorable Madisha. No problem. Thank you. The NFP... Thank you, Honorable House Chair and Honorable Members. Uh, I, I greet you all with a very heavy, heavy heart because of the issue of because the issue of unemployment in this country is a hard and very real reality. In a country already heavily stricken by poverty, with an extremely wide inequality gap, spiraling levels of crime, etc., unemployment exacerbates these serious matters. In fact, these high levels of un unemployment with a lack of comprehensive plan for government on how it plans to reduce it, it is a grave concern. The NC government is not singing from the same key note on the matter of employment. On the one hand, the Minister of Finance sends warnings to reduce government spendings, the wage bill and other related costs in order to slow down the country's borrowing rate. But on the other hand, the president stood before the nation during the his states of the nation address and made job creation a priority through the infamous presidential employment stimulus. President Ramaphosa told the nation that by the end of January 2021, over 430 
thousand opportunities have already been supported through the stimulus. He said, a further 180,000 opportunities were currently in the recruitment process. This is a total of 610,000 610, job opportunities, which is an ambitious target given the financial constraints that Fiscus is in. Where is the money going to come from to fund these job opportunities? We support the initiative of government in creating job opportunities. But what is concerning is the strange fiscals and whether these targets can be achieved at all. The matter of unemployment is a very sensitive one to South Africans. It is not to be toyed with because it affects the livelihood of families, their basic human rights. Therefore, when government makes such commitments, it must deliver on them. Public confidence on this government is already depleted. Statistics show that the unemployment rate of those aged between 14 to 25 was 70 percent, meaning that youth unemployment could be described as catastrophic. The unemployment rate stood at 32.5 percent in the fourth quarter, according to the to states SA, but the expanded definition of unemployment stood at 42.6 percent. For further quarter of 2020, the number of employed people increased to 15 million. It also showed that the number of unemployed people increased to 7.2 million. The National Freedom Party believes in order to successfully address the issue of spreading unemployment in this country, government must forget about the limited definition, which stands at 32.5, but focus on taking the expanded definition of unemployment sitting at 42.6%. The people who fall to that expanded definition have given up looking for jobs because there are no jobs anymore in the economy. We do not think anyone who is staying at home not working right now is by choice. The second thing, your time is now is that Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you, House Chair. Thank you. Um, let me recognize now the Honorable Madisha. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Chair, uh, and uh, all the members. Uh, it is not the first time that this uh, motion or discussion uh, gets brought before this house. And here I am referring to uh, all the unemployed, both the young and the old. When it was brought uh, before this house, government agreed that it was a crisis. And further, it further promised that that crisis would be addressed. That I'm saying uh, it was done from 1998 and on very many other occasions up to uh, today. Chair, I have pointed out that given that this discussion has become a strong of this parliament, that gives instructions to the government that does nothing but ignores um, that both parliament and South Africans instruct it to do, that jobs can be uh, created. I'm saying that by that i'm referring to government government that is supposed to get instructions from both parliament and uh, uh, the people of south africa now in the previous discussions i pointed out that to quote myself what i said there that south africa is the sixth richest country in the world but it is one of the poorest in the world south africa's riches emerge from the mineral resources where more than 400,000 uh, people work, but are losing jobs daily and are, or even uh, paid very low uh, wages. To further quote what I said then, uh, because as it was the case from 1998, I said, it is a fact that still prevail that the recommendations we make are never implemented. That is why today unemployment rate stands at above 50 percent and the majority of those who work do not receive any living wages, unquote. When I raised that fact, which had been empirically proven, government said it was not true. But where are we today? Whether government agrees or disagrees, it has put South Africans in an economic genocide. What must be done? We are in a very serious problem. Therefore, what must be done? The first thing that I propose is that we must stop 
multiple privatization of state infrastructure. As you are I'll doing. Check. I'll check. I, I think Honorable Matisha must choose whether to show us no, the time no, or the no, face. No, Mendo, you, can't, you can't just interrupt. Why, uh, why do you want me to recognize you on Rule Cola? Oh, I'm saying, Chair, Honorable Matisha is showing us the thumb and the half of the face, so she, he must decide which one is this. Oh, Honorable Matisha, the Honorable the caller and others would like to see your face and not your thumb for the last 10 seconds that you have left. Your face is not visible on the screen. Well, uh, can I go on, Chairperson? Please proceed, Honorable Member. Thank you. Thank you very much. I propose that what government has got to do is to stop multiple privatization of state infrastructure, as you are doing uh, at the moment. Secondly, it must reduce the highest levels of bureaucracy, which outdoes the size that of all Africa's uh, biggest countries. Now, that is what is happening. And as a sequel to that, the young people don't get jobs because if you check the bureaucracy here, we Your have a very serious problem. Sorry? Your time is now. Thank you. Oh, okay. Thank you. The next speaker is the Honorable Hendricks. Honorable Hendricks, you may continue. If the Honorable Hendricks is not there, I will proceed to the next speaker on the list. That's the Honorable Bahrain. Thank you, Chairperson. It was Euripides who said, and I quote, talk sense to a fool and he calls you foolish. Nonetheless, Minister, I'm talking to you and I'm willing to take a chance. The unemployment crisis amongst the youth in South Africa is now the worst in the world. Not only are we the worst in the world, but sure enough, it's deteriorating daily. Despite our government throwing money at various summits, talk shops, discussions, ideas, every year, we descend further and further into the pit. It's trite to say that when you're in a hole, stop digging. Someone should tell our president to stop digging. It can't be business as usual. A lot of these problems start at school, and obviously we need to teach our learners how to be work-ready and how to be productive and functional for not only themselves and their family, but for our society. It was Margaret Mead who said, children must be taught how to think, not what to think. It is particularly sad to see our schools churning out learners year after year who are not functional for our workforce. Clearly, the economists the world over are right. Government does not and should not be creating jobs. Government should be creating an environment to enable businesses to employ. Furthermore, most of the economists the world over are telling us that it is small business that will be the engine room for job creation for our future. Small business desperately needs a conducive, regulatory, free environment. The Democratic Alliance is not calling for complete deregulation, but is calling for a system whereby businesses don't feel government is a handbrake for job creation. Government should be supplying the oil to grease the wheels of an employment environment. So what does our Minister of Employment do? He does everything in his power to hamper job creation in the small business environment. Even our Minister of Finance mooted the idea of decoupling the small business from the bargaining council. What does our Minister of Employment and Labor do? He signs off a spurious agreement extending the bargaining council to the restaurant industry when he knew full well that it would be destructive, especially after COVID-19 lockdown and especially after an outright ban on liquor sales, destroying the industry, which is already on its hands and knees. When you talk about youth unemployment, you effectively mean those who need to come into the workforce for the first time. This group can't look to the ruling party who is still in that unhappy and dysfunctional relationship with Kasatu. It stands to reason that the governing party cannot speak for the unemployed because they only speak for the employed with a forked tongue, mind you. Even the trade union movement is starting to see through the duplicitous action of the ANC. The ANC negotiators are those very people who carefully entered into a three-year wage agreement with the civil servants and then went ahead to renege. The government was 
fully aware that they couldn't afford the wage increases. And despite this, purely to get more votes, they entered into an untenable and unsustainable three-year increase agreement. When the chips were down, they literally couldn't afford to pay the third-year increase, and they blamed it on the lockdown. They looked for a technical gap showing to the world that they are completely untrustworthy. We cannot rely on the present government to grow jobs for the youth. Not now and not ever. We can only increase employment for the youth by giving small firms a break. It has been said and estimated that almost 70% of all jobs in South Africa are provided by small and medium-sized firms. These are the bridges between the informal sector and the formal tax-paying business world. Our labor legislation does not differentiate between small and large businesses. It should. Labor laws that increase the job security of people already in employment cannot avoid preventing those desperate to enter the labor market from finding work. The mass unemployment that we have today, unprecedented in modern history, is a consequence of all the above. Lack of skills, poor education, unavailability of job trading, the fear of dismissal legislation, and quite frankly, the entire onerous raft of regulations and laws. Despite all of this, our unions who act as the tail wagging the dog, the dog of government, encourage more and more rigidity so as to improve the lot of those that already have employment and to act as a barrier for those who want to enter the job market. The unemployed in South Africa have no chance. They cannot negotiate their own working conditions and they certainly can't encourage small business to at least give them a chance. Our labor laws stand as a very sturdy barrier for any young person to enter the workplace. The termination of employment procedures are so complex and so negative that mass, un mass unemployment is only unavoidable as a consequence of these conditions. It will be a permanent feature unless we change the government and a group of legislators who are prepared to consider the unemployed. The disadvantaged individuals would be able to enter the workplace if the environment was relaxed to the extent that small businesses can take a chance to try and train. Thank you. Thank you, honorable member. Thanks. Thank you. The next speaker is the Honorable Deputy Minister of Small Business Development. The Honorable Deputy Minister. The Honorable Deputy Minister of Small Business Development. Thank you very much, Chair. I think I'm audible now. Thank you. Yes, you are, Honorable Deputy Minister. You may proceed. Honorable House Chair, Honorable Members of the House, our guests in the platform, and many, many who are affected, who are keen to listen or to hear about this important date, debate. I also want to join the members of Parliament who spoke and also sent condolences to the bereaved family due to the problem in, 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 in our university. And I also send con condolences to those uh, who actually uh, lost their beloved ones uh, during the pandemic. Uh, that actually ravaged our, our land, our communities like a wildfire. I also rise to wish uh, all those who will be going to their various places of worship uh, to do so very well and being mindful that the enemy of pandemic remains with us. I appreciate this opportunity of participating in this very important uh, debate about, about the future of Africa and the future of the world, our young people, Amakobo Namakobo Gazan. The crisis continues indeed to increase. We'll remember that in 2020, uh, the number of uh, unemployed, the percentage of unemployed youth was 55.75%. And it is now three years, it is continuing. So our house is on fire. We all agree on that one. I am not going to further continue analyzing uh, it because already it is with us. We fully agree we've got a crisis of unemployed young South Africans. But I also 
want to include women. Although there is really indeed a lot of causative uh, uh, problems that make us in this country to be in this situation. Let me just tease one. Because when we come to parliament, we, we, we tend to deliberately forget what happened yesterday. I'm going back to that debate of saying the causative effect here is the inequality. Continue to suffer even when they have graduated, because ako farmer no bufunde le ugulima, indo kala ge funega si lungis, ugu dedisa zonke ezinga gizi sendi lin, ezinga zazo zibushungu gazi dedis, au funu gulungis the inequality, ugwanze ba bonga bantu ana ba bene equal access to education, ba bene equal access to better diet, you have to do something and something drastically. One of them is the one hated to put it. Here in South Africa, there's an, an affirmative action. Here in South Africa, uh, the, the land issues must be left to those who are actually having land to make decisions for us. The issue here is the DEE and all those that seek to promote equality so that whatever few positions of a job we must have Access, uh, equal access to them. Let me leave that one, Che, and honorable members, and state that indeed there's a plethora of youth unemployment. There is also a litany of the programs that we are putting forward. Agreeing with honorable deputy minister of Employ employment and labor that we are going to work hand in glove, but not only the departments, but all the agencies out there. And those who claim to be wanting to employ our young people. This time, our young people must be assisted through the proliferation of incubators, TVET colleges, so that they are not always looked upon as those who seek to be employed, but also others must be employed by them. So that opportunity is in the process of creating. I'm so happy to report share to this honorable house that our people, now that there's an opportunity, they are extreme good innovators. They can innovate, they know what to bring in, what plant, what type, because when we went to Rustenburg, we met Lerato, who actually is about to export a perfume ANZ when we get Others are exporting, particularly in KZN, Ngale Moringa tree, facial creams, soaps, and everything. They are producing themselves. We are not only going to ensure that their products are of a quality so that they are, they are, big, they are in competitive in the market, but we are also putting up trade markets, working with SALC and local municipalities, trade parks, including trade hubs in other countries. We speak now, we know that there are those who are in automotive in KZ and Richards Bay. They are exporting uh, parts of uh, car, automotive parts to other countries in this country. This is not a miracle. It's what we deliberately and consciously do. Can I surprise everybody by saying it was only last year when the honorable the, the president of this country called upon the Department of Small Business to actually 
create 1,000 young entrepreneurs within 100 days. And that was done. And that task was achieved. We also say it was good to be in partnership with NIDA because there were many hands. But it, that example on its own tells us that we are, have reached a stage where we are ready. We are equal to the crisis. We are equal to this particular problem. But also, let me also say that uh, our people have got land. Uh, I mean, the little land that is on in, under our feet. Our mothers and sisters were never job seekers. Indeed, they were producing and they were selling. They were actually marketing. They were street vendors, even in our townships. I remember Matumbe, Upadada, all those being set, sold by our people. Let me tell you, Imonopoli was there. They were being harassed. Uh, their own products were thrown away using police. They were arrested. They were fined so that they should not interfere with those who are in charge of the capital. Today, they can go and sell anyway. And we are assisting them with the means of production uh, so that they can be equal to the task. We have agreed that all those who own wholesalers, they must go. We have actually approved 200 products that must be found in the shelves of the wholesalers of this country for our people to buy. We are also taking back them back our people, our women, they were only those few who were actually employed by Abu Madam Melotesh. But the time is here, Tina no Madam Maslepa, Emma Simini Sikube. Our people, our young people, in Maginje, he lent to him fund with Tetrao, he lent to Babageba Fundi swing into how do you take a boy who has been hurting Kaki, who is used to work in the land of their fathers? Let education be relevant to Ulenda Uvela Guyo up until you decide you want to do else other than what you already know. This, these are the reasons why today we are actually discussing here. When we discuss, we must know that we're talking about realities. We're talking about there's no, no, no vacuum. From poverty to where we're going, there's no vacuum. We have to walk, we can't be without being. This being the reason why I'm saying a lot of transformatory processes in order for our system to talk to our plight. But I must also remember this house. But as this government, we have actually agreed and confirmed that at 15 years, you are not going to be unemployed. You are still pursuing a career in education, whatever you do. So when we calculate this unemployment, I don't know why, because even when you are 15, we still cater for you to get that children's grant because we believe you still have to be at school and prepare yourself let our young people enjoy their youthfulness. Go to the university. The demand that is increasing of our people, I mean, young people from rural areas pursuing a tertiary education in various Tibet colleges that exist in our country. We are taking incubators now from where they were in cities. We're taking them into townships. We're taking them into rural areas so that we start incubating those small businesses that are participating. I'm glad to say we are out there, young people. We are out there, women of this country. If you don't have a registration certificate, just talk to us. We will be putting apps. You will be assisted by CIPRO within 48 hours. Two, if you are not registered with SARS, because you are not going to be compliant, if you go to that office and no one serves you, we are there to monitor and ensure that you get your SARS certificate. And we will register you in the DPSB uh, 
Red National Register to ensure that you are compliant. You are going to be compliant like them. The time of equality in terms of doing business is going to be an equal opportunity for all of us in South Africa. I Thank you, Honourable Deputy Minister. Minister. Your time has now expired. Thank you. The next speaker is the Honourable Mumalu. Honourable Mumalu, you may continue. The Honourable Mumalu, or is there another member of the IFP? They are fine with the closing of Mamka of the NC. I'm waiting for the Honourable Numalu or another member of the IFP. It seems to me the Honourable Numalu is having some connection difficulties. Honourable Shlengwa, do you want to close the debate? Yes, thank I think you. It's data. Please, please. Oh. Person, thank you very much. On behalf of Honourable Numalu, let's thank all the members for their participation. Oh, I think it's back, um, Chair. Thank you, Chair. I don't know. We, oh, I we just had a load shedding, so I don't know whether I'd be able um, chair, so uh, if I may not um, open my, my screen. I... Okay, let's, honorable members, let's. No, chair, I'm, I'm on the floor. Been... Honorable Mumalu, uh, uh, honorable Shrengwa, let's allow the honorable Mumalu now to proceed. He, he, he doesn't need to switch on his, um, his video. That's honorable order. Mumalu. Honorable Mumalu, are you there? We seem to have lost him again. Honorable Shlengwa, yeah, no, we're trying to deal with the situation here. I will allow that the Honorable Shlengwa to conclude on behalf of the Honorable Mumalu. No, thank you, Chair. You don't have a tape, should you, Chair. They must not try and assist you in chairing. Chair, on your Honorable <laughs> Mumalu, um, thank all the members who have participated. I was ready. Um, to that actually highlight the very fundamental challenge confronting this country of a ticking time bomb of young people, our brothers and sisters who do not have jobs. The shortcomings in the policy interventions of government have exacerbated the problem and escalated the challenges and realities of inequality. There has to be new and innovative thinking in how we do things and there has to be collaboration between government and the private sector in order for us to make the advances towards creating jobs for young people. This speaks to ensuring TVET colleges that are effective, functional, and fully resourced and are able to meet the demands of the job market. It speaks to access to education and resourcing our, in our schools. It speaks to ensuring that municipalities are fully capacitated to actually meet the demands um, because all jobs are local, all economic activity is local. It speaks to renewed calls for the youth ministry, which is going to be able to focus this country to the plight of young people. It speaks to working together in this parliament to find solutions. But moreover, it speaks to a citizenry that has to step up to the plate and call for a change of government. It speaks to us gearing towards the local government elections and the 2024 national elections with a new mindset to say that those that have been in power since 1994 have failed. Einstein says insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. Voting for this party, which is in government now over and over again and expecting different results is electoral insanity. And so honorable chairperson, we hope that through this debate, all of us will be stimulated into new thinking, will be stimulated to harnessing the trajectory of the fourth industrial revolution and understand that it's not just about dressing up in an overall uh, or a costume as we've seen some ministers do, but it's actually about doing the work. And so there has to be serious changes um, to how we approach um, the whole jobs question in, in South Africa. In conclusion, Chair, we are, of course, settled with the challenge of student funding in our institutions of higher learning and we're calling for renewed and ex uh, extreme restraint on the part of the police force. It cannot be that every fees must fall, uh, you know, 
protest or march, which are legitimate calls by students being characterized now by the violence being meted out by police. We've seen this in 2015, 16 and 17, and it's now rearing its ugly head again. But also we are saying, let us sit down and fix these problems around the table and find credible, functional and sustainable solutions to this very, very real um, challenge. So the IFP thanks all those that participated and hope that we come out of this understanding that things have got to change. They must change. The situation is very, very desperate. And Chair, it's quite unfortunate that we had a jobs debate about the young people and the governing party could not field one young person to articulate the issues of young people. Thank you, Chair. Honorable Member, your time has expired. Thank you. Honorable Members, before I adjourn the session, I just want to deal with a point of order that was raised earlier by the Honorable Van Dam on remarks that was made during the debate by the Honorable Zungula. We have subsequently checked the speech of the member and also what exactly was said. Um, what the Honorable Member said was an opinion and a view that he was expressing on his behalf and that on the behalf of his party. Um, there is certainly nothing inciting from the speech of the member that can be detected. And as such, that point of order is dismissed. That brings us to the end of this virtual sitting, and this virtual sitting is now adjourned. Thank you. Long live Thank you. the chair. Long live Comrade Florence. Long live the IFP. Viva IFP. Long live the DA. Viva the DA. I'm going to summarize on behalf of Mumalo. Hello, Chief Wim. Mam Dun, Joa, Long live. Go, Pinto. Yeah, uh, Fandam. What have I done now? Please, ma'am, don't forget to. Who happens up taller when? I'm not going to go to the house. Mam Dun, Joa, Mam live during the people. Mam Dun, Joa, the house. Long live, Mam Dun, Joa. Yo, 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 yo. Now, Z threats. Stop taller. <laughs> oh, long live, Mam Tunjwa. Long live.